so that uh, if something happens, you know, you have your work saved. Okay, so as far as why our character is basically hovering above this instead of looking like it is standing on it, what we can do is double click on our player. So we're back in where we have our behaviors, our properties. If we scroll down, we see these options here, edit hit boxes as well as edit points. We want to select edit hit boxes. And basically what happens is when you come into GDevelop, you bring a sprite in, GDevelop automatically puts a hit box on your object that you brought in. So if I scroll down here, see the space right here? So this space is the space that's making it look like our character actually is actually hovering over the ground. The way we can deal with that is we can select use a custom collision mask. So I'm going to left click there. And then what I'm going to do is because well, I'll show you right now there's no hitbox. So what you want to do is select this plus to the right. And now you see this right here. That's our new hitbox. What we want to do is take these circles and drag out this hitbox. Now for the bottom, what we want to do is we actually don't want to drag our hitbox so that it's going all the way to the ground. And you'll see why. I'm just pulling this out to make this more square. Push this in so. Okay, the reason why you don't want to have this come all the way down these points, because basically our character is going to meet the ground platform right where this is, right? The reason why you don't want to have this come all the way down to the ground is because our character is not in an orthographic view. Orthographic view is kind of like a, a, a totally 2D, like where there's almost no 3Dness to our character looks. Our character is. It's on a side view, but it's also in kind of an isometric view. Like you can see that it's, you can see the mentions to it. Long story short, we want to have it, have it being our character looking like it's standing on the platform. The best way to do that is to have this hitbox actually be up a little bit so that there's actually some room for the character to stay in. And hopefully you'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. So with that done, I'm just going to click close. And then I'm going to select apply. Okay, so when I click the preview button now, our character falls down and our character is no longer hovering. However, the character is now behind the uh, ground. We don't want that. So we're going to close this. And the reason for that is I'm going to click on the character. We, when I clicked on the character, we can see our properties over here. This Z order here determines what is in front of another object. So what, think of one as being all the way in the back. Two is a little bit forward. So our character is on number one. When I click on the ground platform, you can see this is number two. So the higher the number, the closer you are forward towards the screen. So this is set for two. Our character is set for one. As long as our character's number is above two, our character will be in front of this ground platform. So what I'm going to do is change this to eight. I'm just choosing eight. It's just a number. Any number above two would work. We could also have changed this to one uh, and then made this two. That would have worked. I just chose eight just because I chose it. Okay, now let's preview this. And now you can see it looks like our character is actually standing on this ground now. And hopefully you can see also why with the hitbox, I actually made the hitbox be up some because it looks like our character is... You know, there's a little bit of dimensionality to the graphics, so uh, I think it looks good how it is now. However, when we move, our character doesn't go into its walk animation, and when we jump, our character doesn't go into its jump animation. So I'm going to show you how to set that up. Okay, so, so far we've been in this era where we're basically working with art. We, what we need to do now is set things up so that we can work with the programming of GDevelop. Programming in GDevelop is very nice. It is very artist friendly because there's a, a, pretty much there's a, almost no code. There's a small amount of code, but almost no code. Uh, you actually can work with code if you if you want to. However, GDevelop lets you do a lot and lets you do a lot uh, very quickly without using, for the most part, almost any code at all. So 
what we're going to do is we see this uh, game one event. We're going to left click there. Once we click here, we see this this uh, message that says there are no events here. Events are composed of conditions and actions. Add your first event using the first buttons of the toolbar. So we're going to left click here. And uh, now we see we have a condition as well as an action. So we want to think of conditions is think of con conditions of when something happens and think of an action for the most part as uh, what to do. So this is when, when something happens, basically do this. So what we want to do is select add condition. We have all these different options. We want to scroll down to where we see platform behavior. And then what we want to do is uh, look to this option where it says is on floor. So we're going to left click there. And then we're, we want the player to be on the floor. So we're going to select player. And then we're going to select OK. Okay, so we're basically saying, look, when the player is on the floor, uh, and we're telling GDevelop, when the player is on the floor, we want you to do something. We, there's numerous ways you can set up the programming for GDevelop. Uh, what we want to do now is we actually want to add four sub-events to this. So this makes an event, and an event, event contains an, a condition and an action. We want the sub-event button, which is right here. Now, if you click here, see how the sub event you, you can't see, you can't select that sub event. What you want to do is where it says player is on the floor, you want to click right under here, like where there's add condition in the nothingness of add conditions. So when you click there, you'll see that you have this uh, button pop up. So I'm going to click here four times. And uh, the first thing we want to do is we now we're saying the reason why we put these sub events in here is because these other events are going to deal with actions that we want to take place while the uh, character is on the floor. So by making these sub events, we only have to have say the character is on the floor one time. So what we want to do with this now is we want to go to add condition, scroll back down to platform behavior. And what we want to do here is select is moving. And we're done with the player, so We're going to select player. And now we're going to select OK. So what we want to happen is we want for when a player is moving for something to happen. And what that something is, is we want our, our uh, player to walk. So I'm gonna select add action. So remember, condition is when something happens, action is what you want to happen. So what we wanna do is go to Sprite, then select animations and images, and then you wanna select change the animation by name. And the uh, what we're working with is the player, and then this is important here. Uh, we brought in the frames, the uh, sprite frames for our walk animation, and we named that walk. So what we want to do is left click here. Because this is something that we made up, like we chose to, to type the name walk. Uh, that wasn't something GDevelop chose. We chose it. We could have made, you know, it, instead of saying walk, we could have put, you know, walk a little or walk fast or walk metallically, walk robot whatever. Uh, because we chose walk, we want to put in parentheses walk. You want to put in the exact name of that animation that you put in, and then you're going to click OK. And because we did that, uh, where we have this now saying, OK, the player is on the floor, the player is moving. What do you want to happen? OK, we want the uh, player to walk. So now, When we go to move, we can see that our character starts its walk animation. However, things still aren't right. We want the character, when it's not moving, to not walk. And we have that idle animation. So what we can do, and this is pretty cool in uh, GDevelop, what we can do is we can hover over players moving. Actually, let me click on there. I'm going to right click. When I click, by the way, I clicked in this nothingness here to select this. I'm going to right click, and then I'm going to select copy. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be careful of this blue line. This blue line, everything on this blue block is connected to right here. Right? This is important. See how there's one blue box, two, three, four? You don't want to select this A condition here. Like I'm about to paste what I copied. You don't want to paste that to A condition connected with the same blue box. When you go to the second, 
the second, the blue box should just say, this is a separate sub event, is basically what's going on. So hovering over uh, this air condition here that isn't the air condition directly under players moving, I'm going to right click, and I'm then going to select paste. So we have this uh, player is moving, right? Why did we do that? The reason why we did that is we're going to double click on this. And before we told uh, G develop look, when something is moving, when the player is moving, we want you to walk. This time we want to tell G develop when a player is not moving, we want you to do something. So how do we do that? We can go right here where we see this invert con condition. We're going to left click. So now it basically invert condition does the opposite of what the condition looks like it's saying. So check if the object's moving. This is going to check if the object isn't moving because it's, it's checking for the inverted condition of this or the, the uh, you know, this is moving. So this is saying check if it's not moving. So we're going to select OK. So because we say, OK, when a player is not moving, we want you to do something. What do we want it to do? We want G develop to uh, set the animation of the player to instead of walk to idle. So normally we would go to add action, sprite, animations and images. We would go down to change the animation by name. However, we're not going to do that. I just want you to be aware that you can do that. That's the longer way. The shorter way is we can left click here and then hover over this, what we have selected here, this action, right click, select copy. Make sure that you're not going to add action directly underneath set animation. Because if you look at this uh, blue box here, that's in there. We don't want that. You want it to be aligned with this. And again, you can kind of tell by the blue box. So we're going to right click, select paste. So now it says set animation of player to walk. We want this to be idle. Now what's cool is we can double click here to go back.